Lorde Mari, 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 Lorde Mari,
first time guest here, uh, just slip your hand up if you're a first time guest. God bless you. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. So glad to have you. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. At this time, we'll stand and we'll greet one another at this time. The choir will give us a ministry of music. Go to someone that you don't know. Good morning to them at this moment. This time. six o'clock uh, on next Sunday uh, we will come early we will start morning worship at 10 o'clock let somebody say 10 o'clock 10 o'clock 10 o'clock 10 o'clock 10 o'clock <clears throat> 10 o'clock now don't look like that because y'all watch uh, Aretha all day I ain't so I'm just gonna tell you I ain't see but by two patients I was just told up I told him I just I couldn't make it and I, I you watch Aretha from 8 30 to how, how long that funeral was? Like eight hours? Eight hours? All right. So, so you can get up at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Just one Sunday only. Just 10 o'clock next Sunday. And we'll send a text message out to remind you all at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll be here. We will leave immediately uh, following our worship uh, service to go to Selma, Alabama to be with the Greater New Hope uh, Baptist Church. Pastor Johnny Blunt and Sister Linda Blunt are celebrating the 24th. Uh, anniversary and they have asked us to come and they got good groceries and uh, I've already uh, put my request my request in to Sister Blunt. She makes a mean sour cream pound cake and uh, so that would be mine exclusively for me and uh, so y'all oh yeah I, I promise you I'm coming back with a whole cake all right, and uh, so uh, we're looking forward to that. So let's, uh, you won't have time to get you no chicken. All y'all diabetical people, go on, eat your breakfast. You're going to pass by many places on your way. Get up early, go on, eat your breakfast, because we're going to go straight down there. We're going to start uh, time we get there so we can get back. All right, and so uh, those of you that want to go with us, you can follow us. We'll take the bus, and I'm sure some people going to uh, want to drive. And so I will make sure that you have the address to the church. Uh, 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 before uh, uh, next week, uh, we are football season has started, and we're so glad about that. And uh, we'll continue to pray for the Auburn Tigers. We pulled out a win on yesterday. We're playing their strength in the Lord and the power of their might. Uh, and uh, we're praying for Brother Jalen because I believe he just lost his job on yesterday. Um, it is what it is. You have to give credit where credit is due. Is you got to play who going to win. And uh, so uh, we're praying for him. 
Don't y'all look like that. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, the dude throw the ball on the – did y'all watch the game? He was throwing the ball on the money. Did you notice how the team was clicking while somebody else was in? Sometimes you got to change stuff up. Doesn't mean – doesn't mean that Jalen doesn't have talent. I think he, he'll be good, a wide receiver. I'm going to change them plays up uh, because uh, that boy throwing the ball on Hawaii, throwing the ball on the money. And uh, what did they name me a tour? Tuka Baho <laughs> But anyway, he good. But um, so, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, it's exciting, nigga. It's, it's exciting to see uh, the team develop and all that kind of stuff. But uh, where's, uh, uh, oh, where a uh, will? Oh, okay. All right. I was trying to make sure he was still, you know, he an Auburn fan, so he probably tuned me out. Um, he went to Auburn. Who are you? An Auburn friend? Oh, oh yeah. I forgot. Uh, we are gonna save y'all today. The Crimson Stain saves. <laughs> Jesus said it. All right. Uh, at this time, we're gonna worship the Lord with our giving, uh, and at this moment in time, we give unto the Lord that which He has given unto us. What kind of giver does God love? A cheerful giver. And so uh, I do want to uh, say uh, that we are, for those of you that don't know, we are a few months away from Christmas. <laughs> and so uh, you need to try to grasp your mind around that. And uh, 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 you got a few months to save your little coins for Santa Claus and uh, all that. So it's coming down the pipe. Uh, be safe on Labor Day. Uh, some of you are off. Most of you are off. Uh, those of us that are working in the healthcare field are not off, and so uh, people still still need care on Labor Day. All right, all right. One of our officers will come and lead us in prayer as we're ready to get. Heavenly Father, we know, Lord, that this is a blessing to be able to give and bless those who don't. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless the offering that for to be the better edification of the kingdom. These are another blessing. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. Let us remember it is first Sunday, and so first Sunday is our fellowship and assessment. So we ask that you give one dollar to uh, Brother Robinson or Brother Word uh, in that basket. My left and my right, we will stand. Come around and give a tithe and offer. Those of you that are watching online, uh, you can go to Giblify and uh, you can give at this moment at this time. Anybody need a change in here today? Amen. Amen. Does anybody need to be changed in here? I know everybody ain't perfect. I know I need God to change some things in me that are not what He wants them to be. 
for a change. chapter 25 hallelujah Woo. when you know you've been changed <laughs> see some of y'all can't feel that because maybe nothing has happened in your life some stuff that you shouldn't be doing that you, the Lord took it away from you hallelujah 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 Matthew chapter 25 I want to, I want to put, uh, uh, start a series of sermons uh, from verse 31 through 40. Woo, I still feel that though. I'm trying, I'm talking about a change. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a show enough change that he took the taste away then. Ah, hallelujah. Mm. Places you used to go, you don't go no more. Wonderful change. Hallelujah. 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 When I look back over my life, I thank God I'm not what I used to be. Thank Him for deliverance and setting me free. And hallelujah. God is a good God. Woo. Y'all mess me up. Matthew chapter 25, 31 through 41. The word of the Lord says from the NIV version, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on the right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? 
when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on the left, depart from me, you are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not even invite me in. I needed clothes and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help me? You, he said, he will reply, verse 45, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. I want to start a series of sermons this afternoon, this morning, on what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? You look at this, this text, Matthew 25. Matthew 25 opens up with a parable of the ten virgins. And if you've been in church five minutes, you know five was foolish and five uh, were wise and uh, uh, they woke up and they trimmed their lamps and the foolish one said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out and they replied, no, uh, that's not, it's not enough for both of us and instead go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. And so the text opens with that parable, it moves from the parable of the virgins to the parable of the bags of gold. And uh, it, it talks about a man who was on a journey who called the servants and trusted them uh, wealth to him. And he gave them five bags and to another two and to another one. And, and, uh, and he gave according to their ability. I believe that uh, we are in a strategic time in our church because we really don't know what we're supposed to be doing. Because if we knew what we were supposed to be doing, we wouldn't be doing any and everything. I'm preaching better than I respond. I'm coming down your road. Uh, uh, we got to be more than a ministry that communicates in group me. We got to be more than a ministry that holds parties and Christmas parties, but are not doing anything for the community. You ain't got to have no church building to do ministry. All you got to do is have a willing heart. And so today I want to ask you, what are we doing? What are we doing? We got to do more than just come to church on Sunday and Wednesday and passing by homeless and sick folk on our way saying we are the church. I put in my notes, we're not going to get but two or three amens. It's going to get tight for a minute. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is what God is calling our church to be. If you're going, God is saying today, if you're going to be my disciples, not only be my disciples on Sunday and Wednesday, but I need you to be my disciples Sunday through the rest of the week. Hmm. So he says there are going to be two classes of people. The sheep and the goat. The sheep are going to be on his right and the goats are going to be on his left. And what you got to understand is just because you think you're going to be on his right does not necessarily mean that you're going to be on his right. In other words, there are some of you that come to church not because God has been good to you, but there are some of you that come to church because of your position. And God is saying to you today that you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. That he knows your heart and he knows whether you want to be here or whether you want to be somewhere else. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is, let me, let me, let me say this, let me say this, let me say, breathe in, breathe out. Because I can feel y'all, I can feel y'all throwing shade in y'all mind on me. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, there's a blues show that's going to happen in a couple of, couple of hours from now. 
Nothing wrong with the blues show. Nothing wrong with the blues show. But when they go to the blues show, they're not going to have to tell the folk what to do when they get there. It's already understood that you bring your coolers and your chairs. Because it's going down, down in Hale County, wherever it is, wherever farm is on. Shout out to, to the blues show. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I told y'all last week. It doesn't matter where you go. It's how you act when you get there. God wants you to have some fun. Don't ever think that because of who you are, your position, that you can't have fun. What God is saying, I want you to act like you're supposed to act when you get there. So when you get there, instead of getting a clear cup, get a red cup so nobody know what you're drinking. <laughs> Priest Reverend Tom, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. So there's going to be two. So there's going to be two lines. There's going to be the line of the goats, and there's going to be the line of the sheep. And you just read in the text that, 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 that they're going to have a test that the Lord is going to give them. And the test is going to be, uh, hmm, can I paraphrase it? Uh, did you speak to the folk when you came in the church? I'm talking about on your row. Some of y'all sat on the row, ain't said nothing to nobody. Look straight ahead. I, fellowship time, you ain't moved. And that's why people don't want to come to church. It's because some people in the church want to be sheep, think they're sheep in their mind, but their action speaks as goats. Preach, man. I'm doing the best I can with what I got. And so I want to ask us, what are we doing? What are we doing? Who are we clothing? Who are we feeding? Who are we giving water? Who are we going to see in prison? What are we doing? So text says, this ain't no shouting sermon. You ain't going to shout today. All right? Should have shouted with the choir. He says, when the son of man comes, in all his glory, the angels with him, he will sit on the throne. He will sit on the throne. The Bible says that all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another. I want to tell you that you got to get your relationship with God right for yourself. See, y'all say yeah, but do y'all really understand that you can't get in on your husband or your wife plan? That your spirituality, you can't say, well, I was married to this person and they were spiritual and so I'm spirit. No, you got to get your own. That's why grandmama said, uh, I don't mind is the devil's workshop. Some of you can't be sheets because you on Facebook too much. You know what's going on on the timeline, but don't know what's going on in the word. You ain't got time to read, but you got time to like, love, and share. And God is saying, I'm a jealous God. If you're going to spend all that time with Aretha on Friday and you don't want to spend no time with me, the Bible says, watch this, let the dead bury the dead. Nothing that was said, nothing that was done on Friday from 8 o'clock to whatever time they got through helped Aretha. So there's going to be some goats. There's going to be some sheep. So now, I want to par par parenthetically pause right here and tell you that there will be some pastors that will argue this, but I can argue with the best of them. Some people say that sheep are dumb animals. And to a certain extent, they are dumb. Uh, but, 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 but one thing about sheep, they know who they belong to. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. See, cows have to be branded because they don't know who they belong to. But when the sheep, the sheep know the shepherd, and all the sheep can be down at the creek uh, getting some water, and when their shepherd hits the staff, run the sheep going to go with her. DJ sheep going to go with him. Jeff sheep going to go. See, sheep know their shepherd. The question is, if you can't distinguish the voice of God from the voice of the devil, then maybe you're a goat trying to act like a sheep. Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And a, oh my God, and a stranger, they will follow. Now, in other words, if, you, if, if God has assigned you to this ministry, 
then you ain't wondering somewhere else. Preaching better than y'all responding. I said, if God has assigned you to this ministry, you ain't gonna, me, 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 you're Mika, me and Yamika were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she don't even know how this blessed my heart. I almost shouted. I almost shouted when she said that. She said, she said, you know, when, 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 a, when a certain church came to town, she said, I went down there a couple of times, and then, and then they were acting like they were trying to pull me in, and they, I went down there another time, and they said, well, where you been? She said, I've been at my church. <laughs> See, that ain't no goat. That's a sheep. In other words, you can visit someone else, pastor, but you understand that you ain't there to stay. Sometimes you just there to see how good God has been to you where you, re oh my God. Look at somebody say, you're a goat or a sheep. Okay, let's see, 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 let's see. I found out something. I'm, oh, oh. My birthday is this week, and, and I ain't really making no real bones about my birthday. I'm just glad to be alive. And so I know Erica just had a birthday. She celebrated all month. I ain't got that much energy. But, but uh, I, I, was, I, I thank God for every birthday because I understand that he didn't have to do it. But he did. But I found out something that if I do this list of what God says the sheep are supposed to do, watch this. Maybe one of the reasons why God can't get us where we need to be is because we're too busy being goats and not being sheep. You didn't close your Bible, did you? He says, he says, he says this, he says this. He says in verse 37, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry? When did we feed you? Then, and when were you thirsty? And when did you need something to drink? And when did you see a stranger and invite you in? Or when, when did you do it? When did we see you sick or in prison? God, you ain't never been. And then, then, then the king says, I, 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 whatever you do for one, you've done to the least. Whatever you've done to the least, then you've done it unto me. In other words, the reason that some of us can't be, get blessed is because we don't want to bless nobody. If you if you have any kind of spirit in you, man, I can I, listen. Sometimes I, I I ain't gonna say I hate that God talked to me, but sometimes I just you know I be wanting this spirit to be quiet. <laughs> Cause I can be at the gas station, and the Lord will tell me fill up her car. Hey, I ain't I ain't I ain't I don't know her. I could be a Dollar General and, and I see somebody at the register struggling and they ain't got enough money, little old lady, and the Lord will tell me, swipe your card. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> but what you got to realize is that when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, <laughs> hey, the deeds that you have done will be flashed before your very eyes. And God is going to say, listen, I gave you an opportunity to feed the hungry. I gave you an opportunity to clothe the naked. But you were too busy trying to turn up. And tell one, year, one young lady one day that the Lord told me to bless her. And she, would, she, she just bust out crying. She said, you don't have a car full of children. They have no air. You know, I hate to see that. It's hot. You need some air in your car and in your house. And so I saw them little children, little children, snotty nose and all that kind of stuff. And then the Lord told me to fill up her car. I filled up her car. And then I gave her some money. And she just broke down to cry. And she said, I said, I said what's wrong? She said, I, 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 why, why are you doing this? Why are you being nice to me? What do you want? It's a shame that people don't recognize who God's people are because we don't act like God's people. If you got folk in your life that's always taking and don't ever give, you might have some goats in your life. Because if you're a Christian, every now and then, God ought to prick your heart to say, you got to help somebody else. You got to do something for somebody else because his spirit is everywhere. Thank you, Melania. Watch this. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Breathe in, breathe out. He says, he says, he says, I needed clothes. And you didn't clothe me. When, when was the last time that you went in your closet? What are we doing? What are we doing? We won't give people our good stuff. We give people stuff that 
faded out. And we're blessed. You're blessed if you can go in the slow store and swipe your car and know it's going to go through. I've been, a, I've, been a, I've, been, I've been in some positions in my life that I was praying. My children needed food. The lights needed to be on. And I know I was already over the limit of my overdraft. And my pay week wasn't until next week. But I would tell God, now God, you know my heart. You know I'll help anybody in some kind of way. I don't know how you do it. Some kind of way. I don't know how God does what he does. But I want to tell you, when you got a heart of God, you will always look for an opportunity to bless somebody else. The problem is, is that we really don't believe God. Because if we believe, if we believe that it was more blessed to give than to receive, then we wouldn't have to browbeat you to tithe. I told, I told Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible, Bible study group, and I ain't bragging. <clears throat> I told him, I said, I looked at my tithe uh, statement, and I've already exceeded $5,000 more than I made this year to this church. Not counting what I gave give to other churches, but, but to this church, to this ministry. I have already exceeded $5,000 over, and the year ain't over. But can I tell you something? When God can trust you, he'll bless you. Oh my God. When God knows what you're going to do with him, when he, when he knows that if you see somebody hungry, you're going to feed them. The, hunger, the homeless man on the corner of Arkadelphia waits on me every morning. Because he knows I'm going to do one or two things. Either I'm going to stop and have a McDonald's bag in my hand, or number two, I'm going to give him $2. He knows every car that I drive. When he sees me coming from a mile away, he already waving his hand. And watch this. We have too many people that want to be sheep for social media. Because everything we do, we don't need to put on social media. Because if God tell you to feed somebody, just feed somebody. If he tell you to clothe somebody, just because you will do it for people applause. So what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? So we got we to gotta find some hungry folks. Say we got to find some hungry folks. Then he says, he says, if I was hungry, you gave me nothing to drink. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was hungry, you didn't give me anything to eat. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me anything to drink. Then he says, I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me. I got to deal with us right here, and I'm closing, and I'm done. Because the problem with this church is that y'all done got comfortable. You think the ministry belong to you because you lead the ministry. You don't want nobody else in it. What you're doing, you're stagging our growth. But I'm telling you, the, the day is the last day. Day is the last day because we got to understand that this ministry is not just for the halves. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. See, there are some churches that you go to, you know bougie folk go there. Oh, you already know the doctors and the lawyers and all that. But anyway, but God is saying, I have made the oasis to be an, an, o an oasis for everybody. It's not just the doctors and the lawyers and the, and, and the city councilmen and, and, and all these other. I made it for everybody. And you got to understand that sometimes your blessing ain't going to come from somebody with a degree. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. Sometimes your blessing ain't going to come from somebody that got a six-figure job. Sometimes your blessing going to come from somebody that's on welfare. Let me tell y'all this. True story. True story. True story. True story. It was my anniversary. And this is one reason why I don't do past anniversaries and I'm done. It was my anniversary and one of my members desperately wanted to meet what the church asked to give the pastor. <clears throat> this told me up. <clears throat> she didn't have it. And she I had I had been a blessing 
to her family and, and brought, them, brought them through some things and walked with them through some deaths. And, and so she, she wanted to show her appreciation, <clears throat> but she didn't have no money. I'm going to tell you what she did. She, she took, oh my God, she took her food stamp card <laughs> and she put it in a card and she wrote me a note and she mailed it to my house. I remember it like it was yesterday. And she gave me the pin number. And she said, it's this amount on here. She said, I've already got my grocery for the month. What I want you to do, I want you to go to the store and I want you to feed your family. Yeah. Have mercy, Jesus. At that time, I had just left Jacksonville, had just, uh, had just left a $50,000 cut job to come and do what God say do. Had just got the repo man, had just picked up two of my cars. I'm going somewhere. I was only working part time. We were trying to make ends meet. And here is somebody that receives assistance from the government. Says this man of God has blessed me in such a way. I ain't got much, but here's my food stamp card. But what she didn't know is I was scratching my head. Trying to figure out how I'm going to feed my children. <laughs> and I went to the mailbox and there it was. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that who you have said are sheep may not be sheep. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was, when I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. And when I was a stranger, you didn't invite me in. When was the last time? And I know some of you saying, well, Pastor, we, we living in a different time. You got to be one thing that, 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 that irks me at my house is that I always tell my wife and my children because, but, because, because here's the thing. I, I, I ain't that scared. I don't, I don't care about those being unlocked. Hell, if they going to steal, they going to steal. They going to come get it. They going to come get it. I ain't going to live in fear. Somebody, it doesn't matter what neighborhood you stay in. They still in the projects just as well as they still in neighborhoods. I walk in authority and I believe the report of the Lord. One thing, I'm done. I went to the doctor, I did a sleep study, and the sleep study said, oh, okay, you stopped breathing so many times. Whatever, okay, whatever. You need a CPAP machine. I said, I ain't getting that. I ain't getting one. Karen said, okay, okay, you ain't, you ain't got to get one, you're going to be dead. I said, when my time comes, whether I'm on the CPAP machine or not, when my time is up, he's going to call me. And I'm going to be ready. I want to tell you, when you, you know you're a sheep, when you're not scared to leave. See, some of y'all scared to leave. Y'all really scared. Some of y'all have them dreams where you wake up there and you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just be scared. Be, heart be beating fast. You ever had one of them dreams? What you went to you to die? Oh, oh! Wake up hollering. <laughs> Couple of weeks ago, might, might have been a month ago. Carol didn't know what was going on. I woke up out my sleep. Well, I thought I was woke up out my sleep, and I got. I got straight up out of the bed and I holler, oh! Kara said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What, what happened? But what she didn't know is, it looked like I saw the gate. It looked like I saw the gate. And I was hollering because I was trying to get there. Nothing was wrong. I'm, talk I'm talking about when you know you're a sheep. Nothing was wrong, but I thought I, saw, I thought I saw the light. And when I came to myself, I laid back down and I prayed and I said, thank you, God, for giving me peace in the midst of my storm. See, when you know you're a sheep and you know you're in this care, then you don't care what happened to you. You, 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 you don't care because you know that there is a there. And even though I ain't, I ain't ready to go, don't, don't, don't y'all take this the wrong way. I, I, I ain't ready to go. I still got about 50 more years. I want to be here. But, 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 but I want you to know I'm not a goat. I'm a sheep. Because when he, when, he, when, he, when he lowers his staff, 
and he calls my name, I won't linger. I'm going. Because I know that when folk been hungry, I fed them. When they were naked, I clothed them. When they needed, when they needed a uh, drink, I gave them something to drink. When they were strangers, I invited them in. And you can't tell me that God does not speak to you like he speaks to me. You can be on the elevator and the Lord tell you to speak and you'll be like, uh-uh. <laughs> be in the doctor's office with folk and the Lord tell you, you'll be like, uh-uh, uh-uh. No. Sometimes we don't even know we entertain at angels. <laughs> I'm done when I say this. I was, had just gone to see a patient and I was trying to find a wreath. my phone and my iPad went acting right it wasn't charged so I had to put it through my Bluetooth through my and I couldn't watch and and they were lowering that casket and, and because I'm going through what I'm going through I had to pull over but then I heard the spirit say hmm, that's not goodbye let's just see you later and, and, and I want to say to each and every one of you just because a person is functioning doesn't mean that they okay for those of you that parents are going home to be with the Lord only you know what I'm about to say. You only know the hurt that 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 that, that, that your heart feels, and nobody can tell you how to get through it. Not a therapist, not a counselor, not a pill. Nobody can tell you how to get through it. And so what you have to do is that you have to remind yourself. I had to remind myself this week when I was getting this message together. I ain't no goat. I'm a sheep. That even though I missed the physical presence of my family, my, 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 my parents, I thought it was just me till last week. The teacher said, Carol, in our email, said, John Michael been crying. He's been saying he's missing his grandmother. So I've tried to tell him to think of the happy times. I say, but here's the thing that she missed. Sometimes you have to let people feel how they need to feel when they need to feel it. I want to submit to each and every one of you that all of us are guilty as charged. That there are people that the Lord has told us to go to and we refuse to go to out of our own fleshly desires. But God has said, I sent a word through the prophet to tell you this morning, to ask you a question, what are you doing? Are you clothing the naked? Are you feeding the hungry? What are you doing? We got to get back to the basics because God wants us to be. We want to be on the right side. We don't want to be on the left with them goats. I want to be on the right side with the sheep so he can say, enter into the master's joy. That's where you want to be. Lastly, I want to say to you that we have to get serious about our relationship with God. You want to have a date night with your boo? That's good. I need one day. But when you going to, God say, when you going to take me out? When you going to spend some time with me? You, you got time for everybody, children to get a day? Your spouse to get a day? When is my day? Oh, it's Sunday. That ain't but an hour. God is saying, you got to work on your relationship with me so you can be in the right line. I want to be in the right line. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be in the right line. And so as we, as we, as, as the door of the church is open, as the door of the church is open, listen, I told you you weren't going to shout. I want to tell you, but this message was needed because sometimes we need to reevaluate where we are. What are we doing and what God has called us to do? And so if the word has been rich to your soul 
and you're looking for a place to plant. You're looking for a place to be. This is the place for you. God is speaking to your heart today. The door is open. I will open. My heart that you purify our hearts, sanctify our minds. Let us be worthy to take what you have done on Calvary for us. He who knew no sin became sin for us. And so God, we ask that you forgive us for our many sins. We've said things we shouldn't have said. We've gone places that we shouldn't have gone. But we ask right now in the name of Jesus to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Be ashamed, just ask your neighbor. You gotta, you gotta push it down, then pull it back. Push it down, pull it back. Push it down, pull it back. Pull it all the way down. We ready? On that night, he took bread and he broke it and he blessed it and he said, "This is my body. Take ye, eat all of it." Likewise, he took he took the cup which represented the blood of Jesus. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He said, take ye, drink all of it. Well, pretty good today. <laughs> <laughs> my mother put it in the refrigerator. Holy Ghost. Last time it tastes like some moonshine. <laughs> Not that I know what it tastes like. <laughs> that was my form of life. Hey man, uh, I think the ushers will have that y'all got something for them to put put it in. We want to uh, pray, especially for uh, Sister Bridget Jackson and her family, and we want we speak blessings over their life. Amen. That God is a healer. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, and she she has been so uh, I have been encouraging her and her son, and God is gonna do it, and they're gonna have a testimony. Amen. Yeah, Lord. Of what God can do, because what he done one time, he can do again. Yes, yes. Amen. And all he needs is a willing heart and a willing mind. All right, let us stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. 